Hi there, this is Ted Fletcher with FMS Integration. Today we're going to go over the core module serial configuration. So there's a few things that you're going to need to get started. A laptop or tablet with an Ethernet adapter. Admin rights to change your NIC settings. A network or Ethernet cable to plug into the core module. Once the core module has been programmed, you're going to want to test that serial connection. So you're going to want to have a small slotted screwdriver for the serial connection if not already made. A Modbus scan software for verification if not already tied into your remote monitoring system. A USB to RS-45 adapter if you're not connected onto a serial network. So when working with the unit, behind the front door there's an access panel located up at the top. That's where you're going to find the core modules and the serial connection. Serial connection is located on the upper left terminal blocks for the two wire RS-45. The bottom module, module one, is for the upper panel. And the upper card is module two, which is used for the lower panel. Default communications on these units are set up using IP address 192.168.127.5 device ID 5 for the upper panel and default communications for the lower panel is 192.168.127.10 using a device ID of 10. So coming into the unit, first thing we're going to do is you want to update your network interface settings for your Ethernet adapter. So here we're going to go left click on Ethernet, then we're going to select the Ethernet adapter. Here I already updated my settings, but if you're using something different, you just want to be similar to the core module. So here I use 192.168.127.21. Once we have that set up, and we're plugged into the core module. We can open up a web browser. I prefer using Chrome. So we'll open it, expand it, and then we'll start typing in the IP address for that first core module. So 192.168.127.5. Hit enter. You see the home page pulls up. We see some basic information of the module. So then we're going to want to go up and select network, left click go down and left click on serial. Here we can see the settings available. So in my scheme I'm going to update this to be address 17. There are no dip switches. I'm using 9600 baud, parity none, stop bits one. So you can change this accordingly. Once you hit update settings you should see a little dialog asking you to apply changes. Once done you'll see a success if prompted for a username and password, the default is admin admin, if not changed already. So once we have the first module done, then we'll just change the last part of the IP to dot ten, hit enter, our page refreshes, go down to serial. Here we're gonna change this address to 18, and then I'm gonna select 9600, none one, click update settings and apply. We can see that we are successful. So now we're going to go test that connection. I use a program called Modbus Poll from Modbus Tools. So I'm going to remove the default, add my loaded file, which already has the registers preset. So now I'm going to update my connection information if required. Here I already have it set to slave ID 17 for the first panel. So then I'm going to connect and we're going to watch the transmits to ensure that everything's communicating back with no errors. Now that we've been talking, I'm going to increase the pull rate to a faster rate just to ensure that the comms are nice and stable. And we see we're pulling in at a faster rate with no errors, which is ideal. I'm going to disconnect, go back in, update the slave ID to the second panel, connect. And we see the second panel is talking as expected. 
just let this run through for a few seconds. Alright, then everything's looking good. We're going to disconnect. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to close out this tool. And then the last part, what we'll have to do is anytime you change the slave IDs, you have to update the configuration. So from the local display, go home, configure com, view panel one. Here, we're going to push on the five for the Modbus device ID. Once we've depressed that, a keypad will come up. We'll type in the new ID for that upper panel. Once done, we'll press enter. Then we'll go back to configure com view panel two and we'll repeat the same process. We're going to click on the button for the Modbus device ID. Push on that. We'll see a keypad display. We'll update the new slave ID for the second panel. Once that's been updated, then we'll hit enter. And then you can go back to the local panel and you can check your live data. If anything is wrong with that configuration, you'll see error marks called out next to the data cells. If you like what you see, hit like. If you want to stay up to date, hit subscribe. And by all means, feel free to leave a comment.